Why we just before? Before or after? Before. Excuse me. Okay. Um, welcome to the uh, August 5th, 2020 me uh, meeting of the Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners. Uh, I've got a short book to read. Um, pursuant of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 20, and the governor's executive orders imposing strict limitations to, on the number of people that may gather in one place, although a quorum of the members of the Dudley Water and Sewer Commission will be physically present for this meeting, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. The meeting will be live broadcast on Dudley Cable Access Television Channel 192, and members of the public can also access the meeting online via YouTube. In the event of an unanticipated interruption in the broadcast, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Members of the public who wish to appear before the board um, must make an appointment to appear on an upcoming agenda by contacting Jennifer Knoyer or by emailing watersewer at dudleyma.gov. Placement on the agenda is not guaranteed, however, and persons requesting to appear before the board should not attend a meeting in person unless and until the appointment has been confirmed by the board. Persons with members with matters appearing on a meeting agenda may request that they attend via virtual means, such as conference call, rather than via in-person attendance. Such request should be directed to Jennifer Knoyer at 508-949-8007 or by emailing watersewer at dudleyma.gov. No, no more than 72 hours, not counting Saturdays, Sundays, or legal holidays, in advance so that appropriate arrangements can be made. However, persons or representatives with matters appearing on the meeting <coughs> notice and agenda who wish to be physically present at the meeting must observe the following requirements. Only 10 people, including the board members and staff, will be permitted in the meeting room at one time. Satellite rooms will be available for overflow and the meeting will be broadcast in real time in those satellite rooms. Total capacity in each room will be limited to 10 persons. Persons who wish to participate in any particular matter on the meeting agenda will be asked to wait in a satellite room until that agenda item is reached, at which point attendees will be rotated between the main meeting room and the satellite rooms as appropriate. Again, the total number of persons in any room, including the main meeting room, shall be limited to 10 people at any one time. Social distancing must be maintained in both the meeting, main meeting room and in the satellite rooms. Face masks or coverings will be required in accord, accordance with Governor Baker's May 1st, 2020 COVID-19 order number 31, order requiring face coverings in public places where social distancing is not possible. A copy of that order can be found at www mass.gov slash doc slash may dash one dash 2020 dash masks dash and dash face dash coverings slash download failure to comply with these requirements may lead to an attendees removal from the meeting from the meeting end of story okay with that being said, um, let's uh, begin with a uh, the pledge to the United to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Okay. Meeting minutes. We've got two sets of minutes, one from July 8th and one from July 15th. What's your pleasure? <clears throat> Make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from July 8th as written. I second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? Stay in. Stay Okay. Uh, so <coughs> that would be uh, <coughs> four, four, yeah, four, four, zero, and one abstention. Okay, and then July 15th. July 15th. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to accept the minutes of July 15th. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to accept the meeting minutes for July 15th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, it's unanimous. Okay, Kevin Goodwin, Four Lots Realty, 44 Alton Drive, looking for permission to connect to water and sewer. Um, I guess if you, uh, for those folks who are, who are in attendance, um, you can uh, we step to the podium for uh, for address, addressing. I think. Go ahead. I'm basically just looking to build a three bedroom, uh, two bath, single family home on 44 Alton Drive. Uh, so you uh, single family home, four bed, two bath. No, three bedroom, two bath. Three bed, two bath. Just 1,600 square feet. Okay. And uh, George, um, have you uh, checked that out? Yeah, that location. The sewer lateral that runs right by the house in front by the curb, and there's a water main that runs right through there too. Uh, yeah, no problem with that. No issues there. Okay, and he's been made made aware of all of the the, the fee structure and all of that. What's the uh, pleasure of the board? Um, we've we've seen. Okay, uh, we don't have, we don't need um, plans and all that for the house. No, we're just just for connection. Make a motion to uh, allow connection of water and sewer at Forty Four Alton Drive. I'll second, second that, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? That's unanimous. Thanks Here you go. come back and get anything okay okay good luck sir thank you have a good night uh, let's see number six PFAS treatment grant discussion high and bond good evening uh, Jeff Faulkner from tie and bond um, so I have three items for you tonight one is uh, you should have on your desk um, of a set of plans for the PFAS interim water main. Uh, this is just a status print of plans uh, of the ongoing design work to connect pumping station three to pumping station six. I just wanted to give that to you for your 
tension and review. Uh, no review at this moment is needed, but uh, we're working with George uh, to update the design. We do have a conservation commission meeting scheduled for next Wednesday, I believe. Uh, we also are submitting to Massachusetts Department of Transportation because uh, there's a Route 12 uh, work. And we're also planning to submit to MassDEP uh, for a water main distribution modification request. Okay. If you have any comments as you review the plans, uh, just get them to us and we can incorporate them. Uh, they're not final plans, like I say. We're reviewing them internally, uh, modifying them, uh, getting some input from George. So uh, certainly give us your, your comments. <clears throat> okay, this is informational. Informational only, yes. The, uh, the second item I wanted to bring to your attention uh, is the PFAS grant that you applied for uh, a month or so ago. The, the date that DEP was intending to release the awards notices was July 31st. Uh, we contacted them and they need a few more weeks with that. Um, so bring that to your attention. Um, what that means relative to your previous discussions is how you want to proceed forward with the phase two of the PFAS work. Uh, there was a uh, submittal to you to move forward with pilot testing uh, and preliminary design of a treatment plant. Um, and you, you held off on moving forward on that until you heard back about the grant. Um, that's certainly fine. You can still continue to do that. I just wanted to bring to your attention, there was one task of that work that was time sensitive, and that was applying for SRF funds for the construction dollars for a treatment plant. Um, the deadline for that is August 21st through the SRF program in this year's uh, set of projects. So. You know, I think you might want to have a discussion on whether you want, want to move forward with that or are comfortable moving forward with the, the full uh, pilot study at this point in time. Okay, um, I know the one question I had in reading what was sent out to us earlier um, was uh, if we don't do anything, in, uh, if, if we do apply for this grant, uh, the, the, uh, lo the loans, and then it, for whatever reason, we don't end up going forward with it. Does that um, end up um, adversely affecting our status within the SRF program? No, that wouldn't adversely affect it. Um, you could then resubmit the following year if that were the case, uh, and that effort would be uh, minor because the, the application would essentially be prepared to just need some minor updates. Um, the advantage of this year, the, the, the rules get modified year to year as, you, as we as throughout the program. Uh, this year's program offers a 0% interest rate on PFAS projects, so that's a, a benefit. Um, the other potential benefit is if there's any federal stimulus dollars uh, through the economic relief packages that they're talking about in Washington, uh, it is likely that they would push those through the programs such as the SRF, um, and they're looking for you know close to shovel-ready projects. So the further along you are, the more likely they'd be apt to give dollars, and, and those would likely be in the form of, of a grant or principal forgiveness. So th those are the two key advantages of moving forward at this point in time. Um, there's, there's not... Um, any, any detriment to holding back other than uh, you would de be delaying the project if it were to have to move forward. Um, so there might be some discussion with DEP. Um, you know, they might actually have to put an order to get the project done should that have to happen. Um, if the timing works out that the, um, the treatment plant is needed. 
but if we apply for a loan and are awarded a loan, and then we don't use the loan because yes. of whatever happens, yep. say say they by some miracle of fate they set the rate set the uh, level higher than yes significantly higher than it that they're saying that they're going to set it at. Yep. So um, uh, applying at this point only keeps you in the loop. Um, it does not require you to move forward after they uh, list you uh, as an approved project. There's a couple of checkpoints along the way, and uh, you could turn down the money if they were to offer it, and uh, there would probably be no, no ill will at that point. And you said this, that's a zero percent? PFOS projects only, uh, zero percent interest loan, uh, and then you have your additional uh, uh, the status as potentially getting some principal forgiveness. Okay, any anything from any board members? I know there were a few of you that had few that had uh, concerns about what that level is going to be. Yeah, I mean, we we know they're going to have a level. We don't know what the level is going to be. <clears throat> um, I mean, I would move forward with the SRF. Yep. That would, it's just a matter of do we want to spend, what's the difference between the SRF and what the design for the treatment is? So the, the task for the SRF application in the uh, phase two work was $7,000. So if you, you know, want to discuss the $7,000 approval, uh, we can get your paperwork to, to sign an agreement for $7,000. I mean, there's no, no harm in going forward with submitting the F SRF application, but I still have concerns about spending you know, $200,000 on, on work that might not need to be done without knowing that yep. it won't cost us. <clears throat> so. Okay with going through with the 7,000? Well, I mean, I think 7,000 is a minimal cost, right. knowing that you're gonna get 0%, I mean, that's not even a year's, it, yeah. not even a year's interest if we have to go forward and then we don't have you know, if they go back to a 2%, you know, the, the 7,000 is a, a better investment in my mind. Um, any, any, have they given any indication as to when, as if for either you or George, has the state given any indication as to when um, we might hear what the level is going to be? They're saying right around 20, but... Yeah. Is it going to be 20? Is it going to be 30? Is it going to be 10? The, the draft regulations came out at 20. Uh, it entered the public comment period, and all those, the comment period is closed, and it's in DEP's hands. Uh, so the, the word is it's going to be 20, uh, but it's not a, as a final document yet. Okay. Did, they, did they post the comments? I believe they're available. I, I didn't look at yeah. them. Yeah. You on the state website? Yeah, if you go and look at it, you'll see how much contention they had from suppliers and, and groups and kind of gives you a feel for if they got too much pushback, they might reconsider. If they didn't get much pushback, they'll definitely move forward. We're in Massachusetts. Uh, however, I've gotten emails about other states' regulations uh, being 10, you know, so it even could be lower than 20 right. you know, if you're in another state. But that would affect your engineering too. You would, if you went and designed it for a 20 limit. The technology should, well, the piloting would prove it out, but the technology should get below 10. Okay. Um. Make that a motion. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion that we move forward with the $7,000 fee to complete the SRF application. And we'll address the other portion of that at the next meeting. I'll second that, Mr. Chen. Okay, motion's been made and seconded um, to um, move forward with the SRF application um, process. Uh, so the bu our budget, uh, how are we sitting for being able to absorb that in either op operating or engineering or Well, this is all part of that. This is part of the funding that we approved at town meeting. 
Yeah, oh, I, I would consider this approved. part of the. It's already been approved. Uh, okay, never mind. Scratch that. A <clears throat> lot going on at work. My head's still spinning. Yeah, so the town meeting approved up to $200,000. Um, for engine, that's right, for the engineering costs. That's yeah. right. And would this, this would still be eligible for reimbursement through the grant, should we? No. Um, so the, the, the proposal to you for the phase two work was uh, $185,000, I believe. Um, the 7000 was not included in the request for grant because uh, it, it was going to be a little odd to ask DEP to pay for money to, or to, to give you money to, to apply, apply for, for more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the $200,000 uh, appropriation would still count. It just wouldn't come out of the, right. the SRF monies. All right. Okay. So either way, whether we get the grant money or not, that was coming out of our... Our pocket anyway. All right. Okay, so motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks. Unanimous. We'll, we'll, we'll get you a, a form to fill out for that. Okay. Just, we don't have that at the, today. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll sign that. Okay. The, uh, the third thing I wanted to bring to your attention, and I emailed it to, to George, Jen, and, and Scott today, is um, some draft scope for the asset management plan work. Uh, so this is an asset management plan grant application that we're preparing um, due August 21st. And we presented uh, some topics that uh, we think it would be of interest to you in the water department uh, to proceed forward for asset management. Um, and I guess it, it's a document, I think it's six or seven pages um, that we would ask for review and comment uh, by next Thursday. Um, in addition to your yourselves, we would ask for a total of 10 people in town to review it and complete um, a form that we would include in the grant application. And this is basically a participation survey indicating that the 10 people that fill out this form have read the scope. And if you have comments on the scope, we can modify, but uh, that they're willing to participate in the program next year should you be awarded the asset management grant. Uh, these are some just completing those forms are actually a good score boost to getting the grant dollar. So we'd encourage you to do submit 10. So you want us and 10 more? No, total of 10. So Total of you know, 10, okay. Yeah. Uh, town administrator. Town administrator, uh, treasurer, collector. Uh, treasurer, um, um, accountant. Town office. Yeah. Yeah. Wh whoever you feel appropriate, but I listed a few that, that might, might work. Maybe some of the, some of the employees. Uh, in the in the scope document, um, a, a few points just to, to bring to your attention. So one of the things that we'd like to do is is build a hydraulic model of the water system. Uh, so that's included. Um, we'd like to GPS locate the hydrants and valves in town, and add that to your mapping. Now, we do have a GIS map, but it's kind of like a traced over paper map at this point. Um, there is a inspection of facilities, of buildings and tanks, uh, with the caveat that we're proceeding with projects right now, so we're not gonna do a heavy uh, assessment of projects, of, of sites that we're doing work next year on. Um, there are a few items highlighted in yellow, and, and those are meant to bring to your attention uh, either questions that we had or commitments that we would look for you to make relative to your involvement in the program. Um, a lot of it is in-kind services, so it's how your staff would use their time to be facilitating the, pro the program. So. For example, if you have water hydrant flushing going on, if you take down a little bit of data for us while you're flushing the hydrants, you can count those hours flushing the hydrants towards the program. 
as in-kind services. Um, it also includes purchasing a few things for you, uh, including uh, a tablet and a GPS locator, or a GPS device so that you can locate hydrants and valves, and a hydrant diffuser. I'm not sure if you have one now, but uh, includes purchasing one so you get a better uh, metering of, of hydrant flow tests. Mm. So with that, I guess, you know, it's a document that I don't expect you to read right here on the fly, but if over the next week or so you could review it, uh, provide any feedback, and uh, look to fill out those participation forms, that would be great. Okay, um, and this is all going to towards a uh, grant application, correct? Yes, um, the grant application uh, would be going in August 21st, so if we get it from you, towards the end of next week, it gives us about a week to finalize. Um, in the back of the scope, we list some rough dollar ranges. Uh, so the, the actual scope changes the, the dollars. Um, so we're giving a range right now and, and would like your input. Uh, the total project being 125 to $150,000. Um, of that, 60% would be grant. So 75 to $90,000 of grant money, uh, 25 to $30,000 in cash. So uh, it would be a, an expense to the town and 25 to $30,000 in in-kind services. So that would be town labor that you've already budgeted. It would just be counted towards uh, the project. Uh, so, you know, as you read the, the scope, the the document here, you know, assess you know, how much you're willing to contribute and we can modify the scope accordingly. Uh, but uh, somewhere in that 125 to 150 range is so where we see it. So this document here that's highlighted is the same document that we were emailed, correct? Yes. I don't see the, oh, there's the, oh, there it is, okay. Okay, so at this point, you, you, what do you need from us is just the, the, um, the surveys returned in a week? Yes, yeah, and some confirmations on any of the yellow highlighting. Okay. Uh, we did list George uh, as the signatory on that at the bottom of the last page. Uh, just wanted to confirm if, if that's appropriate, if, if who should actually sign the application. Okay. So what's the... So it looks like we'd be committing to spending about twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. And the timing would work out such that you'd hear by January first-ish uh, if you get this award, uh, and then you'd go to Spring Town meeting to fund, and it would be the full value that we would technically fund, um, yes. but you'd get grant reimbursements. I think twice during the project. Um, to pay for the, the services. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes? Is it, ask a question for Judge. Judge, haven't we worked on something like this in the past with laptops and you know, like for box locations, gate valves and everything? We started the, looking into that from problems and things for that new GIS map. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, truly. It hasn't really gotten that far yet. Oh, so it's not that, so. that, it's not that advanced. Do you remember, I don't remember ever doing anything <clears throat> like this in the, this type of thing in the 15 or 18 years I've been on the board. Something new, no. Yeah. Um, help us also. I think it was, this was brought up what, about two months ago, and uh, I, to me it sounds like a great idea, um, it's, it's especially where we can get most of it paid for. 
um, through grant programs, um, but uh, to get a good solid grasp of what we're, uh, what we own and our hydraulic abilities. And I think this is probably pretty critical with you got people retiring because right now it's just memory. <coughs> yeah. And, and books. And you've got to capture this for the future. And this is a solid way of doing it. Absolutely. It all comes in line, like the vulnerability study that we're going to be doing. It, it all, everything leads into another thing because... It all ties together with a bunch of requirements that are going on. They, they know currently the departments out there are losing people to retirees and <clears> things like that. So they want you to have a base plan of, you know, somebody can come in there and look at the set up. We did something, I did something way back as a, a, a plan book um, for resources. To, so if somebody had to come into our stations and run something because that's what they wanted. They could at least look at the book and you know, go through it. But a lot of that's antiquated now. It's different and changed. Yeah, the, 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 day, the, the days of the gate box being three and a half feet from the big oak tree on the right corner of the property um, doesn't, uh, doesn't cut it anymore. Yeah. So you know, later we're all going to go laptop pe in the pe truck pe and People might laugh, but that's the way some of it was written. That's everywhere. Some of the old, some <laughs> of the old cards. <clears throat> but, okay, um, so as a commitment, do you need a commitment from us today? or No, uh, it's more informational, but uh, <clears throat> next week, if you could look at the oh. returning the surveys. Yeah, so uh, everybody's got a survey, and um, yeah. Jen and George and um, probably have Mike and Tim. And uh, yeah, Brian, Luke, you know, do that. And then uh, if we can get a copy of it to uh, the town administrator, treasurer, collector, and, and uh, accountant, I think that'll get us over 10 anyways. Yep. It, you can have more than 10 involved in the project. 10 is just the limit. For Between the, that, I think that's like 13 or 14, but. Uh, yep. Between those, you'll get enough information that to, um, to show viability for the project. Right. Okay. That's all I had. Okay, and we needed to give you a signature for the $7,000, correct? He doesn't have the paperwork for that. Oh, you don't have the paperwork? Yeah, we'll for follow up with you on that. If you, uh, if you can send that down to the office, then uh, we'll, I'll get in here. I'll come in tomorrow and sign it and okay. we'll get it back to you. Great, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, okay. I will be glad when these masks don't have, aren't mandatory anymore. Um, all right, job class reclassification. We've got uh, Job descriptions for uh, the primary, secondary, and labor operator for the water, and a main and secondary operator for the sewer collection system. Yeah. George, the, um, you guys have seen this before. Yep, I brought it to you. I've talked to the town administrator, and um, I've also talked to Tracy Wright from SEIU. Um, and the town administrator suggested that I go before the board of selectmen to present them to that to, to them so they can get an idea what they're all about. I've talked to a lot of the board of selectmen on the side just to give an idea what we're doing. So some of them were aware of it. Um, I they had scheduled a meeting at an executive session the last selectmen's meeting, and I asked uh, Bob Sullivan to come join me to uh, to help explain these. Um, kind of an interesting meeting, but uh, say the less uh, they do. They did get a grasp of it. They did understand what we we're trying to present about what the need of doing it is. Uh, this is something should have been done a while back, but never was. Uh, plain and simply, as I explained before, um, if you're listing somebody on your staffing plan, they need to be listed as an operator, not as a maintenance guy or assistant guy or a shovel guy or whatever you want to call it that the union has for the highway. Um, it, it conforms everybody's position and role in what they do and their responsibilities. The thing about it now is that the superintendent is acting as a primary operator, which can't happen. It's, it's supposed to be segregated out as the overseer of the, of the department. 
should be a primary operator and a secondary operator on the water side. Any third operator that comes in, we, we just call it for like a lab, a lab, I can't with this man, a labor operator. Um, and the primary operator is the main fall guy, and a lot, and he's the one uh, that deals with all general aspects of the chemicals, reports, sampling, uh, what have you, all the way down the line. Um, secondary operator comes in and he uh, backs him up during the normal types of operations, and then he also could cover if the primary operator is out. Um, the sewer department uh, is listed for operators too, only because um, they do water work and have, uh, Timmy has his licenses to operate under the water. And right now they're both doing water work along with sewer work and vice versa. Plan, like I explained before, now unites the department as one. So guys could tell me right now that they're not gonna do water work and not go sewer work. That's not they were hired for, but they've been right along doing it now and added job responsibilities that have gotten really out of control from the state problems to issues we've been having chemicals to what you know the whole the whole thing um, and these now define that everybody our operate who are operators and have licenses are operators or the positions are operating positions for water and sewer and they will they both will be working together as water and sewer so if we have to do water work we do water work if we have to do sewer work we have to do sewer work it's now defined specifically in these in these roles that you are water and sewer together um, boy, doing your regular normal jobs as sewer or water but all bets are off that somebody needs help or we have to go and entrench into something more uh, into one area than the other there's no discussions there's no there's no kickback as far as oh no I'm not hired for that that's the job okay um, of course there are going to be some uh, added, added uh, compensations for these because uh, this is the no this is the way the life is in the water department now this isn't back <laughs> in the old days of grabbing your shovel and go fix a water main these are all different now the jobs have gone way out of way out of whack now and they've been steadily doing that for the last many years so we have to conform to the times as I told the selectman I'm not gonna lose guys because I can't give them adequate salaries for what they're doing and the union right now is coming up with a new with their new um, uh, renewals for pay scales yeah for, yeah um, new contract new contracts and stuff so these have to be listed out anyway not just because the state's wanting us and requiring us to do it but down the line now they have they have an, a, an exact profile of what their jobs really are and do it something like the town administrator is doing with his plan for the, for the other departments too to try to put everybody in line of where they should be the town's been a little bit out of whack with that for a while and it's not fair to the people who are carrying on doing added jobs and not getting compensated for it the other issue I just want to quickly say is there is discussion and I have talked to my assistant operator now who will be my primary operator that um, there may be some indication they might want to leave the union because this is holding them back by going through the town town on the union side the other departments are kicking back on this and kind of trying to put a kibosh to it so I don't want to get into that because I can't get into that it has to be it has to be done um, so that's something too that would give the board here the ability to make the job what it would be as far as a regular like a foreman type situation but only a primary operator's job so we're not following the union issues so things like that well uh, I don't want to even get into uh, well it, it can be done it's union not question already, well that's <clears throat> yeah, that's not well, something I'm we just should, saying it can we be should done, be dealing we should be talking about so but anyway, so that's basically it. it it's, it's something you guys have seen before. It's, not a, it's nothing new. Um, from there, I don't know what happened after the meeting when we left, if they discussed it or what. Um, but uh, I'm going to be talking to the town administrator shortly because he has to get together with the union rep to go over these two. He felt it was better to at least present it to the selectmen first and then go from there. At least he knows where they stand and what they saw and, and discuss that with the union rep. That's basically that. Okay, so we don't know uh, what the uh, union is going to say about about the union. Yet. The union is for it. The, anything to advance somebody in the union, or or you know, is is, is something the union likes, and they don't discourage at all. Um, the problem comes on the other side of the fence, uh, you know, because they don't understand and, and they compare us to other departments and it doesn't compare like that and that's the one problem that that's the pushback that I said but that's up to the union um, 
that that's their job <coughs> to do that, and, uh, and the town administrator's job to go over those hurdles and you know get Should get things uh, on, yeah. in, in line for that. Okay. Yes. Uh, George, how far down the line you think that is? Uh, it has to. It has to be coming up very soon. I can't leave this like this for long. Uh, uh, I'm like union. <coughs> What's that? When is it? When is the contract up? When's the contract union coming up this summer? I believe. Oh, before September? No. Yeah, this well, is summer. In the July time frame. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Already. July. You're talking about this next coming July, up to, this next coming up July. Okay, so 11 months from now. Yeah. Like I said, it's taken this long to get this far. The COVID. Cause problems with everything that's stock, and I'm sure they, there's still going to be uh, <laughs> issues coming up. With I it. just know we've been talking about this for a year or two. Yeah. It just has to be presented properly. Then we've done all the legwork for it. We've presented it to many uh, people in the, in the town with it. The selectmen are aware of it. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think we did a decent job presenting it to them. Thank God for his help. Um, it's really not much where we can do at this point. It's, it falls in the union hands at this point with the time. They're okay with. <coughs> What's that? You said the you you said the union's okay with it. As far as Tracy Wright told me in discussion, that she's fine with. It. I mean, anything to give give what's necessary is fine with the union. It's the pushback that's the problem. They have to get a MOA of, you know, start a whole process of changing these and, and getting cooperation in this. That's where the that's where the long term issues come in and the time consuming issues. So you feel there could be some pushbacks from other employees? It's already been some way, but like I said, I think it's getting out there more to understand that it's not the same departments that we used to do back in the days, back 20 years ago. And there's the problem. Field. Specialized field now. Yeah, I mean, my new, my new temporary guy, Jesse, got a good glimpse of what the water pump is all about. He's, he's been amazed at what we end up doing and how things are, are not what they, he thought they were. So it's a good little wake up call, you know, to, to the things that we do. I told, I explained, and Bob, Bob was there, I explained to the board that, you know, a um, uh, couple of workers in Rentham got very seriously hurt dealing with potassium hydroxide. They got sprayed up. Same thing I did a couple of years back, and my eyes almost went blind. It's not a game anymore with this, with this setup. You're an operator because you're licensed to deal with these chemicals. To, to account for these chemicals, to properly dis uh, distribute them, at, at to uh, put them into your system. And I'm trying to get this across to, to, the, to the board of selectmen and the town in general that these guys do a lot of these type of jobs and, and the liability is very high. And you know the public is at risk when you're dealing with these chemicals. It's not something that back in the day we used to have to worry about. Now everybody has to go through courses, schooling, research, TCHs to get, keep these licenses up to, up to par, and, uh, and they have to answer for any time they make a mistake, and you, they're just not going to come in here for, for you know what it is and, and start doing that. Well, they'll go somewhere else that will that will take care of it. Okay. You know? Do we need to do any um, no any further action to codify this? Or is there There's nothing you guys need to do right now. You've you've been told about this before, and you yeah. just, uh, just well, I know I've, on. I've I've read these before, so. Yeah. <clears throat> I was just looking for some clarification through probably you three have been here for a while. So <clears throat> that process on pay rates and all that, I don't think we have anything to do with that, right? No. That's all going to be done through that's contract all done negotiations. In the, that's all done in the, in the collective bargaining agreement. You sit on it, in on that now? Uh, we, we have never sat in on it, but <laughs> uh, that's why I asked about the contract because uh, um, I think John had mentioned that he wanted uh, to. Yeah, I, I, I have had conversations. You sit in on it. I have had conversations. Well, it needs to be with, me, but um, we should have somebody there. We, we, I have had conversations with Ruta, uh, with the town administrator, <laughs> and with the uh, and one with one other selectman, um, one of the selectmen about this, and they seem to be open to allow you know to to having us sit in. You'll be part of that. Negotiation. We should be. Yes, you should um, be. We've got. Uh, we're we're, we're, the, we're coming up. We're, we're we're pretty pretty darn near half of the uh, half of that that union uh, workforce is is in the water and sewer department, and uh, that that's um, you know we should uh, we should have some uh, some input on that. And um, these uh, of course these are going to have to go through the 
collective bargaining. Yeah, we 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 set actually. I I don't. I'm not even sure if uh, if it does have to go through the union to be able to set this after reading the contract a while back. I don't. Um, I believe we're allowed to set. You can set it, but the union, as far as the pay. Yeah, well, that, the, yeah, as far as uh, yeah. how the, right, rates the negotiation are, part goes through. Pay the rates. I, pay I, rate I am just giving right now, I'm holding things in check until I allow, until I let the representative meet with Mr. Buddha. Yep. Just <laughs> go through their thing, and if there's any snags or snarls, we can iron them out maybe, and then we we'll go for the official thing, and then after that, it's up to them. Okay, um, so thank you. Um, that's copy. We get copies of that to mm -hmm. review. Well, we get some reading to do, but uh, I've, I've read through these a couple times yeah. already. Um, yeah, yeah, there haven't been any significant changes to those. No, no, I, we modified them back and we presented them, and then the COVID hit, and that was everything yeah. kind of st okay. stopped. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, it's up to uh, state bylaws. You know what I mean? Okay. While while we're talking about that sort of thing, and. Um, Creating, you know, getting this to be more of a unified department. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I just go ahead? Um, back to negotiations. Do we need to contact anybody and tell them we want to sit in? Or oh, that that beneficial? conversation has been had. Do we need I, to? I, I will. I will. Um, will uh, uh, confirm that 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 we want to be a part of that. I I think we ought to send something in writing to get a paper trail going in. We can certainly do that, not sure. That, Jen? Yep. Okay, we have draft something up then. Again, can I we can. We have you and Bob volunteer to sit in on that? I'll, I'll gladly sit okay in. Okay with that? I'm not opposed, no. It's fine. Can we right? draft up a letter saying that? <laughs> and didn't Superintendent Slack back before also participate? Review do you want that in motion, Scott? Or just are you okay with um, it? I don't, I don't think okay. it's. Needs to be emotional. I should be able to get okay. it. Yep. Okay, um, but uh, a, a while back, back when we st combined the two departments, um, it was discussed about keeping a, um, a tally, so to speak, when people cross, when sewer salaried personnel do water work and when water salaried personnel do water uh, sewer work, that we keep track of that so we can true up to keep uh, keep the um, uh, keep the uh, budgets enterprise enterprise yeah. funds um, true. Um, I believe it's a DOR uh, requirement. I went digging. I read through screen after screen after screen of DOR stuff on enterprises, looking for um, information. I don't know if I'm looking in the right place or not, but uh, it's yeah. There's just page after page of stuff. Um, to, to, to determine how much of that we really have to do without actually calling them. Um, but um, are, we, are we keeping track? Yeah, especially it comes into play with overtimes and extra type of thing. Normal day-to-day, -day, people jump around and do things you can. Well, uh, it's just so that we yeah. can so that we can keep it track. It might even change if this ends up going to free. I don't know. You'd have to check yeah, it, but I think it would even be. X, X hours this way, X hours yeah. that way. You combine them all, and then at the end, you know, a couple times a year, you transfer transfer funds back and forth to uh, to keep um, keep lucky. the enterprises true. Yeah, well, we've been lucky. A lot of things have been balancing out good, and uh, like I said, especially when we do certain special things. Okay, but it's it's got to be. I, I I believe it has to be um, documented. So that's um, we keep a running logbook anyway. Okay. What, yeah. What is happening? So as long as there's some sort of a logbook or yeah. or something to be. Okay. Um, anything further on the uh, job reclassifications? Okay, superintendent's report. Um, on the water side, you have you have what basically going on. The um, um, it's pretty strict. At well, Luke is coming back, like I said, on the twenty fourth. Um, we've been uh, starting the new skater system at the booster station. That's been uh, st uh, actually starting in the last week or so. They worked on it today, but like I said, with the storm some of the electrical people were pulled back for emergencies and stuff but it is it is progressing um, and Jesse has been a valuable assisting Mike 
because Timmy's out now till the end of August, so he's been helping there too. Um, we've been uh, also starting on the lead and copper stuff, which is turning out to be quite the nightmare. But that's that's for another day. Um, the uh, sewer has been the big big um, situation right now. The Eisenhower Drive pump station project has been completed on the phase one side. I call it the phase one. That's the hatch has been raised up to street level. Um, <coughs> bless you. Bless you. I don't want to wear that mask. Well, that's why I popped uh, into my arm. It, it's been it's raised to street arm. level. We had to do enormous amount of electrical restructuring. Apparently, when they did this project back in the day, they ended up running electrical lines down into a front manhole made a junction box which floods out and it actually came very close because we haven't had much rain in all these many it's, especially when we get a massive monsoon uh, it goes from being just below it it could actually go right above the box and short everything out and we noticed that so we ran LaFleur Electric did the job and they said we need to run a new line from the box directly into the station so that's what they did to make it uh, what it should be um, the jobs came out good it's now flush it's sealed there's going to be no more <coughs> rain infiltration into the into the station hatch. The pumps right now that we saw, one is definitely working. The other one has some questions. They, they we're going to. Um, I had a meeting with uh, the developer and Bob, uh, Bill Scanlon uh, and Mike Krejcik. Um, we got together, and phase two is going to be coming up pretty quick because uh, we're not fooling around with this. We we need to get this. Uh, these pumps checked and uh, get the rest of the project with the railing system uh, underway and installed and put the alarms on. Um, the developer was pretty receptive. He didn't even really want to question anything about it. He just says, okay, do, you know, do what you got. And as far as I can see, I, have, I may have rights to even take whatever bond money without going through the developer. Um, but whether it needs to say whatever it is it's going to be and I'm going to if go after what needs to be go after and uh, we're going to get it done. Okay. I'm not going to uh, let this keep going on forever. So that's, that was a good thing. So at least that's, that's going okay. Um, we did the final startup uh, of the new generator at Lakeview yesterday, just in time for the storm. Uh, it's a quiet running generator, so the neighbors shouldn't have any issues with it. Uh, everything's running fine. It actually, I think, kicked on last night for a bit. Uh, we get an alarm on our phones that state when the generator is on, when the generator is off. Same with Tanyard now. Um, Tanyard activated last night too during the storm. Um, we did have a major problem, which is <laughs> something that I'm kind of already discussed with National Grid. I have a, I, I actually spoke to the representative that who I knew previously from other matters. Um, five o'clock, five o'clock yesterday afternoon, the station went down due to a tree coming down on the primary wires, snapping the primary wires, and almost pulled the service box right out of Lions Road Station. It was right by the Lions Road pumping station. Big tree came down. They, the boys had to go out, and I was with them for a few hours to, to uh, get the, that 1940s generator started up. I wish I had the new one in place, but we're working on that too. <laughs> but anyway, we can't have everything. But it was in place, it was working. We had to go in there and do some other work because we found the floats in the station were damaged, had to be replaced. So LaFleur was lucky enough to come this morning to even do that part of it, but the boys were there all night long. Uh, we were all there for till early morning. We went back there, and I, I couldn't believe that nothing was been done for National Grid to clear that road. Called the police many times, called, went through the fire chief, went through the town administrator. He actually talked to me last night on it because he heard me over the police radio. Um, they finally come out and at least cleared the trees early this morning. After that, nobody has gone there since for anything. So I instructed them that we'll have to leave the job. I'm going to go after the, after, after the uh, meeting to go check the generator, fill it up. One man will come in at midnight to double check the generator and fill it up. Should be able to last till the morning. I've been in contact with uh, the, the high rep who's been now delegated as the storm, storm rep because they all have that position in, uh, when there's something emergency. He's working as fast as he can to get this as the biggest priority to get uh, that going. And it is on the high priority list. But what troubles me is that, and I understand what he's saying, they, the job is to clear streets for the emergency vehicles and that. But I also stated to him that we've had this issue before with pumping stations for water and sewer. And we cannot keep, if, if that, we cannot maintain power like this for days and days and days 
on a, on a generator like that that may quit at any time. It's only one designed for that station. Granted, hopefully we'll have that other one in soon and we'll be okay at least with that, but it's just frustrating that, that you know, with all this help that comes in from many states to, to deal with this, that we couldn't have had a better, better result, but it is what it is right now. So hopefully we'll have something done by either late tonight or tomorrow morning to at least get that back online. So. So that was my, my next question was that any of our stations impacted by power outages, Lions Road? Lions Road's the only one? Lions Road is the only one. The other ones, the generators kicked on and, and, and just for the short term time that they were, there was a power surge. I went out and checked the water stations to make sure they were all set. They were fine. I know the area of Lakeview, Lakeview um, was out for about 30 seconds. And the generator and kicked on. I got all to notice that the generator did kick right on automatically and then kicked off. It just tells us on and on. The new one will do the same thing, kick on off. We're going to start getting the pad made up for that as soon as I get some quotes on the final uh, final uh, price on, the, on that generator. I know the kind of generator. I know what the requirements of the generator has to be. Um, so we're working with uh, to get those quotes on that. So hopefully we get that in place too. Now that I see what's going on, I'm not waiting for another hurricane to come and really give us a problem. Because that generator has had it, that trailer back generator. It's really, you should hear it sputtering and really very nerve wracking. Um, that's, that's basically it. Okay. Any questions for the superintendent? Yeah, I just want a quick question. Hey, George, how many hours a week does Jesse help out? Jesse's a 40 hour employee. Well, he's he's, yeah, he's taking the place of Luke, but now with the sewer, with the man out of the sewer, he's, yeah. out, he's more on the sewer side. So he's down every day? Yeah. I mean, he helps us too. I mean, he's yeah, kind I know, of yeah, split, yeah, but, but I mean, he, I didn't realize if he alternated two or three days. I, I was actually had the thing where we were assisting the town with him too in the high yeah. a little bit, and he was kind of floating around here and there, but the more basic came when. Tim got hurt, then I had to pull him back more work, and we got more busy with some other things that had to be done. And now we're kind of, you know, uh, using him a lot to, to, to help us out. Good. <clears throat> He's learning. Yeah, yeah, he is learning. He's definitely learning. It's a wake up experience for him. Okay. He enjoys it. He, he likes it. You know, so this, that's good. this is a pretty um, one of the smaller reports you've give, given us in the last couple of months, and that, that's fine. Um, so there's some big stuff on there. Um, I just wanted to propose um, a way to deal with these in the future, um, just so that we're not, so that you're not sitting there reading to reading it to us. Is there a possible? And I, this is just to see if the, the rest of the board agrees. Um, uh, if if this could be sent out like the day before, so that oh. we could review it and then we can we ask questions. We, we have been doing that. The okay. only reason this is late, I, I just haven't had a chance. I've been out yeah. all night. Okay, yeah. I haven't had a chance to finalize it. And then we'll, we can ask you questions, and well, then you don't have, you don't have to read. That's what I talked about. We thought that was the easiest. That's why I didn't press on, I didn't read each yeah. other. Okay. Thing. Yeah, and it went that way today. Yeah. Okay, good. Usually they're done about a day or so early. You guys can look at them yep. before you yep. hold the meetings. But like I said, we've been, I've been short on every, and just to give uh, Brian a little kudos, he's been out every day by himself putting in about 10 to 12 meters, full meters, on all these households and Jen and him and then checking these meters of what's been going on and I'll tell you something, the rewards are going to be uh, back to us what, because uh, we're finding a lot of stuff that's not up to par. But you know, that's a lot of work for one minute. And minute. he's wearing proper PPE when he yeah, goes up to the house. Yeah, we, 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 we have these all in appointment, they're yeah. aware of it, they either stay upstairs and let him do his thing or whatever he has. Masks and gloves. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's fully, uh, he goes in, does his thing, goes out, makes sure and checks things, make sure everything's probably, we've found some, found some plumbing issues again. Uh, like I said. Of course. Yeah, so. Well, that's, maybe that's a, the good part of these things that only having a certain, certain life, life cycle. Any, anything that happens can be caught. Um, okay. Um, <coughs> Board comments. Uh, question. Sure. Uh, how we stand on our administrative assistance and working for the town. Okay. Um, letter was sent out shortly after our last meeting. We did um, talk. And, and they, I, you, we, we, I had a conversation with Mr. Ruda on it. Okay. And we're supposed to have a meeting scheduled. He's looking at some certain avenues. I had made some suggestions of what might help his side of things as account, you know, how to do it. 
he's looking into a few things, and he was supposed to have a get together with Jen, myself, just you and yourself, too. And you had some other things you wanted to just go through. Uh, that's coming. But like I said, with all that's going on, he's been. Uh, I, I understand that things are busy, yeah. busy, but uh, um, we can't have uh, have Jen. Um, She's getting some relief being, anyway. Mary's coming on. Uh, um, Mary came back this week, and I've had her. Um, she was up Tuesday for three hours, and they recently have posted the job for um, the Board of Health Building you know. and Zoning. So they're, they have um, posted that position and looking to fill that in the future. So that will help eliminate some things, and they do have a have few the other things coming. Problem is that we're spending water sewer money on you, mm -hmm. not working a water sewer. You can't do that. There's a legal issue here that needs to be resolved. And the issue is overtime. It, the overtime has been completed, according to the records and to statements of everybody here, by Jen. She hasn't been compensated by it. In the future, if she's not going to be compensated for overtime because, quote, there's no overtime. She can't work overtime. I agree. That's the bottom line. But I also think there's a problem with even if it's not overtime, if she's putting hours for the town, well, they're, spending water and sewer yes, money. Yes, that, but that's a separate issue. <clears throat> the real issue, there's, there's, there's a legal issue, a legal issue of paying compensation due. You can't do it with um, grant time. It's got to be paid. Time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be paid because it's past the time. And looking forward in the future, the board needs to get control of this and say whether Jen can or can't work overtime. There's somebody should be controlling whether an individual employee is working overtime or not working overtime. And if you're not going to pay them for work, working overtime, then they should be told not to work overtime. But if you're going to pay them to work the overtime <clears> and they agree to work the overtime, then there's no problem. Right. Now, the other issues go forward is who is going to provide the compensation back to the board or to the enterprise fund, it's really the enterprise fund, for her time. Exactly. I mean, because that is a reality. The town has a separate and distinct budget from the enterprise fund. <clears throat> We are supposed to operate as an enterprise fund, supposed to take in revenue and pay our expenses with the revenue, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's exactly how it works. And they, and they back bill us for everything. <laughs> we have to pay for Ruder's time. We have to pay for uh, Rich's time and everybody else who contributes. So somehow or other, there should be some compensation back to the are you saying we need to stop her from working for the town? Well, I, I think that you, the first thing we're going to do is say, if, not gonna, if we're not going to pay her overtime, Jen can't work overtime. And since the last meeting, have you? That has to be said right up front. Yeah. Um, no, I've been trying to leave right, not, you know, I'm. Usually when I call, I'm calling like right at 4 o'clock and I'm yeah. trying to. Um, Speed that up so that you're. Usually, I'm trying to just. And Jen, for your cut it off the floor. I would okay. log <clears throat> in a log yep. all the days that I came in early and I left late. Oh, I have it all. Because when the issue <laughs> finally comes, I, I, really, because that's what they're going to have to pay you on. Mm -hmm. And you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, the lady has worked the time. The chairman can ask. It's too late to argue about whether she should or shouldn't. She's done it. Yeah. Jen, have you worked any time during the day with the town? Yes. Okay. Well, we, yeah. either, we either got to stop it now <coughs> and say no more, or we need to get compensated, bottom line. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been thinking about it, trying to, you know, we, we need to get that meeting. And that's, month. and I guess the four, it's been a month. And 
as uh, I had a conversation with Jen the other day, and um, at least in my mind, um, you know, to try to force this meeting along and say that, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know what the best option is. I want to, I want to continue to be good neighbors and and play nice yeah. with the town, but um, I think we're being taken advantage of. And um, make a motion that we have Jen stop working for the town until decisions made after this meeting. I just want to ask one question. Um, I don't know if you would want to talk to town council, the labor attorneys or whatever. I mean, I think there would be an option that she could work for the other town departments under a stipend through yeah, the town. They've, they've done that with other employees. To him to talk to the attorney about, <clears throat> say, a consultant works a regular 40 hours on the water my, 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 what, I, what I was thinking was that uh, set a hard um, deadline, say, with the end of this month. So that to force this meeting, get this meeting done, and s some decision has to be made, or we're done. Whole, we're done. That's another whole month. Uh, it's it's yeah, it's a couple more weeks, three more weeks. Yeah, I guess that I notice I'll write out that we need to request it within a week's time a meeting to clarify yep. this. I or think if we stop her working for the town until this meeting makes a decision, that's going to throw fire on their side. I don't think that's a good fire to start. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm I just, don't think, I, I, we have a serious legal issue, but I don't think throwing gasoline on the fire is going to help things. Uh, that, that's my thought, is I just don't, um, I, 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 I don't want to burn. Yeah, it, there is a legal issue here that's got to be resolved. Yeah. Right, that's, I agree there with that. There is an issue, there is an and issue is of compensation to back the road, to the. Though. Well, that's why I'm saying if we set a, we set a deadline of, of, of you know, Mr. Chairman, the month, and if we, if we, if, if nothing's resolved, then we're done. George, we've, we've, we've given at, at that at that point, it'll be down near two months of, of trying to get get it resolved. And um, I don't think it needs to be two. Yeah, I think two weeks. Yeah. Oh, who's I, been handling this? I agree. This? George, it, it should be a George, time. George, you've been handling this with the town administrator. Between, yeah. between George and myself. Well, why can't well. George just march into his office tomorrow morning and let him know the results of our meeting tonight that this has to come to an end? Yeah. Otherwise, we'll, you know, we are definitely looking for compensation and we want an answer. So, I mean, you have to, I think he's just trying to pacify you by saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And we all said we'd do a good, we'd, we'd help out. We, we, we agree on that. But like I said, now we're <clears> probably <throat> being a taken advantage of in that respect. So it's like maybe it. time for George to march into his office and say, that's it. I want an answer. Yeah. But there are two areas here that we need yeah. to, to state. One is Bill's concern that she's not being compensated yeah. for hours and she's working. That can be part of the topic. How are we <clears throat> going to compensate her? So I, I, mean, I, I, can't, I don't see how he can't get right on the phone to the treasurer and come up with a financial system right then and there. Well, I can tell you this. If, cut she, a check. If, if she goes to the attorney, attorney general of the state and yeah. resolve that issue real quick. Yeah. yeah. So. I think you can do that tomorrow, George. Just <clears throat> pass it on. We, we were upset. We want to give a time frame that Scott says at the end of the month. I'm thinking two weeks, and then we, if nothing's fixed by two weeks, so by next Friday, come to some sort of an agreement. Yes. Of, of how how it's gonna how it's gonna move forward. Cut because the I, I, you know, I, for Friday, we're we're dealing with you know. Because this, this could get worse. This COVID could get worse. Well, well the, the COVID thing is going to be around for the next exactly. for a, for a couple of years. Find out where, you know, certainly till after the election. It's, it's <laughs> going to be it's going to be around for at least a couple of years. The day after, after the election. election. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, George, please just <clears throat> politely show them our displeasure, yep. and we want an answer. Okay. Uh, yeah. If not, if not, we have no. If not, we will we'll be. We, we can contact, as Bob says, the, uh, our attorneys, town council. And from there, if we have to go to the attorney general's office, we'll go to the attorney general's office for a rule. Ken, <clears throat> about how many extra hours have you worked? Over and above 40. Um, there were a few weeks where I was hitting about 60 hours a week between meetings and everything. I know, I mean, having um, meetings for four different I committees. am not. Uh, just 
the only meetings that I'm doing are the ones that I own. I own this meeting and I own Board of Health because I'm on it. Um, I am not doing ZBA or conservation meetings anymore. I will not be attending them. You were doing them though. I was doing them, but I'm, I <clears throat> did have a conversation and that has been eliminated from me. We, we, and we, Nelson is coming in on Monday nights. So on Mondays, I don't do anything for the building department because Nelson will be in four to seven. The, um, I guess the other thing we have to find out too is you're a full-time employee and you're also an elected official. Mm -hmm. I'm a special um, employee. You're, you're, you've already done all of that. Yep. Okay, so so the you, the board of health it has nothing. The board of health meetings right those have are nothing to do with it. Right, um, those are any work you do for them during no. the day. And I don't count, I don't count the board of health meetings into anything. Those okay. are mine. I own. But any work you do during the day when you're being paid um, for the board of health is not part of your elected status. No, none of the clerical work. No. Okay. No. Um, all right. Um, yeah, we need that meeting. We need that we, meeting. Uh, instruct George to tell him by the 21st. That's Friday, next Friday, the 21st. That's okay, that's, today is the? Fifth. Fifth. Okay, six, two yeah, so that's. Two weeks from Friday. Two, two weeks from for this Friday, okay, fine. If nothing resolves, she's no longer working for the town. I agree? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That. The 21st of uh, August. It's 14 more days, okay. I'm sure he can march right into the office and talk to Jen and come up with some type of agreement this is what you should be entitled to yeah simple as that and as far as the um, overtime that you well she needs to be paid for whatever hours hour she's working <clears throat> whether it becomes as, as a uh, consultant well, they've done it with other employees in the past yeah it could be a stipend fee a stipend that's right yeah. that. you know? a stipend or um, uh, you know, however, that then that's that something we can we can hash out. Um, yeah. Okay. So two weeks, and um, just you have my work number. Absolutely. Use it, please. Yep. I need the distraction. Sorry, it took so long. The, the project. Yeah, I mean it's. I appreciate it. I've been in in pretty regular contact with her yes. to talk about what's going on and and ways forward and talking about. She said she has had some discussions with uh, with the TA already, and um, we're trying to we've got to move this thing along and, and get it get it resolved uh, because, like I said, COVID COVID's going to be here for yeah. It's not going swine flu has been around now for what 15 years. We don't know how long this thing is going to be here. Um, in any case, um, okay, two weeks. Um, any other comments, Tom? Nope. Jay? No, nope. no. Bob? I just have one on the, the scope draft, George. Did I have that correct here on the 4A? They get the highlighted one as pump station 5, currently not used, determined. The one by the road you were talking about? That's the one right next to the road. Yeah. Is that 4 or 5? That's, that's five. 5. Okay. 4 is the one that I. 4, four is the up station six. that's in the woods by station 6 that's on the same. Remember, I was telling you about using that as an alternate rock. Right, I just so didn't know if they were talking about that, because he's asking about reactivating it. No. So would that be four or five that he's that, talking about? I think he's thinking four in that one. That's uh, what I mean. I should I should check with him. Oh, four, is, four is right next to six, five is down closer <clears throat> to the... Four has an ability to reactivate, no. but not, not five. Yeah, right. five. Yeah. That's why I just want to make sure he gets that clear in here, because yeah. it's... I go through it with him, like I said, you have to go through it. <clears> so we'll check okay. Just to make sure he meant... Four instead of five. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. No. Okay. And I have nothing. Um, wow. No. I didn't did say that out loud. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to put that in the minutes? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, well, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.